Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice system of equations. We have the following equations and we're going to be solving for x, y, and z. So we have x minus the square root of y, z equals 1, y minus the square root of x, z equals negative 5, and z minus the square root of x, y equals 7. And we're looking for real solutions. I'll be presenting two solutions, two methods, even though the second method will be a little brief. Okay, let's start with the first method. So I'm going to change the variables. I don't like the radicals, so let's go ahead and get rid of them. We can basically set square root of x equal to a, square root of y equal to b, and square root of z equal to c. So from here, we get x equals a squared, y equals b squared, and z equals c squared. Notice that since we are looking for real solutions, we do want a, b, c to be greater than or equal to zero, unless, un otherwise we're not going to have real solutions, okay? So under those conditions, let's proceed. Replace everything, so you're going to get a different system. It's going to be like a squared minus b, c equals one, b squared minus a, c equals negative five, and c squared minus a, b, equals 7. You already memorized it, right? Okay, so here's our new system, and we, we're going to solve this system. If you want, you can number these equations and refer to them by numbers, but there's going to be a lot of numbers, a lot of manipulations, so I'm not going to do it, but try to keep track of everything we do here. So here's what we're going to do. Something awesome that works with systems sometimes. We're going to multiply each of these equations by one of the variables in such a way that everything turns out to be awesome. So here's how it goes. First equation, I'm going to multiply by B. The second equation, I'm going to multiply by C. You'll see, in a, you'll see in a little bit Y. And then multiply the third one by A. Let's go ahead and do it. So we get A squared B minus B squared C equals B. And then B squared C minus C squared A equals negative 5C and c squared a minus a squared b equals 7a. Now here's what happens, and that's just awesome. When you add these equations, a squared b cancels out, b squared c cancels out, c squared a cancels out, everything cancels out, and we end up with a zero. On the right-hand side, we get 7a plus b minus 5c. Now, this is nice because we were able to kind of get rid of the quadratics and we got a really nice relationship among A, B, C. And now we can go ahead and isolate one of the variables. B is a good candidate. Let's go ahead and add, subtract the other ones. Uh, so B can be written as 5C minus 7A. Now this is important. We're going to keep using it. And now let's go ahead and consider the first equation before the multiplication by variables. So I mean this one. So we know that A squared minus B, C is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and replace B with what it is, okay? So A squared minus 5C minus 7A multiplied by C equals 1. And now we're going to go ahead and simplify this. Distribute A squared minus 5C squared. Remember, you're multiplying from the right. And then, obviously, that's going to be a plus sign plus 7AC equals 1. Make sense? This is an important equation, so let's go ahead and box that as well. And then we're going to get something like this and put it together. I, you could use the second equation here, right? You could use this one, but I want to go with this one. So let's go ahead and use that one. C squared minus AB equals 7. Now, this equation, what am I going to do with this, right? Again, same thing, replace B with 5C minus 7A c squared minus a times 5c minus 7a equals 7. Let's go ahead and work this out, and then we'll put the uh, two equations together. This gives us c squared minus 5ac plus 7a squared equals 7. This is my second equation, and what am I going to do with these two equations? Work together. So. We can use elimination. Substitution would be really hard because if you try to isolate one of the variables, you have to deal with a quadratic equation, a lot of radicals, so on and so forth. But there's a much better way. We can actually get rid of the constants and turn this into a quadratic equation in A over C or C over A. Do you see 
what I see, hopefully. And since this one is 1 and this is a 7, let's go ahead and multiply the top equation by 7. So let me go ahead and rewrite it here. a squared minus 5c squared plus 7ac equals 1. And then I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 7 and then set it equal to the other equation. Make sense? So let's go ahead and do it. I get 7a squared. I could probably start here. More room. 7a squared minus 35c squared plus 49ac equals 7. And that equals c squared minus 5ac plus 7a squared from here. Okay? Since two things are equal to 7, they're equal. So now we got something real nice. And there's actually a bonus. 7a squared cancels out, making it even better. Let's go ahead and put everything on the positive c squared side. 36c squared minus 54ac equals 0. 36 and 54, their greatest common factor is 9. So I can take out 9c. And that gives me 4c minus 6a equals 0. c cannot be 0. Do you know why? Because if you think about it, what was the first equation? I mean the second one. The second equation was this. And if c is 0, this is going to give you b squared equals negative 5, then b is not going to be real. If you're looking for complex solutions, obviously, that's a different story. But this means c does not equal 0. Then this has to be 0. So 4c equals 6a, which means 2c equals 3a, or c equals 3a divided by 2. Awesome. This is actually a really nice relationship. We're going to use it to find the other ones. Now, since c is equal to that, and we do know that, remember, b is equal to 5c minus 7a, it's kind of like a ratio proportion thing. Now replace c with 3a over 2, that's going to give you 15a over 2, minus 7a, that's 14a over 2, that's going to give you a over 2, which means b is equal to a over 2. c is equal to 3a over 2, so we got b and c in terms of a, which is great. Now let's go ahead and use that in one of the equations. It doesn't matter which one, by the way. That's nice. So let's just use the first one. a squared minus bc is equal to 1. Replace b with a over 2 and c with 3a over 2 and solve for a. Easy. This is going to give you 3a squared over 4. So think about 1 minus 3 fourth, which is 1 fourth. So this is going to give you a squared over 4 equals 1 or a squared equals 4. Or a is 2 or negative 2. Okay, there are two possibilities for A, but remember what we said at the very beginning, right? That was square root of X is equal to A. So if square root of X is equal to 2, we're good. But if square root of X is equal to negative 2, we're not good because X is not going to be real, right? There's obviously complex solutions. You can go ahead and take a look at them, but I'm going to keep it short. So if square root of X is equal to 2, that means X is equal to 4. And then you can basically find b is half of a. So since a is 2, b is going to be 1. And c is basically 3 times b, as you see here. That's going to be a 3. And then you can basically square all each of these and find x, y, z values. So y is going to be 1 and z is going to be 9. All right? So those are all the values pretty much we found. There are no other real solutions. 4, 1, 9. Okay? Great, that's how I made, made up the problem, by the way. So let's go ahead and briefly talk about the second method without further ado. The first uh, method kind of depended upon, you know, a lot of manipulations. The second one is going to do the same thing, but let's go ahead and pick up from where we left off, sort of, right? This was, this is what we had. So we're kind of using that information from the first method, can we? And now here's what we're going to do. Very interesting idea. I don't know who came up with this, but it's amazing. We're going to square the first equation and then multiply the second and third and subtract from the square of the first equation. And let's see what this gives us. This is going to be pretty interesting. And obviously that's going to give you 1 squared minus negative 35 or 36. Okay? Now let's go ahead and evaluate this expression. a to the fourth minus 2a squared bc plus b squared c squared minus a big quantity b squared c squared minus a b cubed minus a c cubed plus a squared b c. Now, if you think about this expression, you're going to get a to the fourth 
and then minus 2a squared bc plus b squared c squared. Can I just cancel these out? Because they are going to cancel out. Let's go ahead and do it. And then plus a b cubed plus a c cubed minus a squared bc equals 36, right? Great. Now, so what does that give you? Let's go ahead and find out. We can definitely take out an a, and when we do, we're gonna get a cubed, which is interesting, and then b cubed plus c cubed, and then minus, oh, by the way, I forgot to combine these two things, that's gonna give us negative three a squared bc, and then when you take out an a, that's gonna give you minus three a b c equals 36. And if you do the exact same thing with different pairs, you're gonna get the same expression right here, but the different variable here, so you can kind of do the uh, same ratio proportion thing. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.